Hi everyone, in today's video we are going to look at some Elizabethan braid stitches. My name is Sarah, this is my channel Sarah Humphrey Embroidery. Welcome to you. If you haven't been before, this is a channel all about different kinds of hand embroidery. So just before I get going on today's video, I've got a couple of thank yous I would like to say, and that is to people who have clicked the super thanks button that you can see below the video, just to show their support because they've enjoyed the video. So thank you very much to Margaret. Thank you to Miss Mellaby again. Hi there. Um, thank you to Barbara and thank you to Tinaka um, as well for your contributions. It's much appreciated. So in this week's video, I thought we would follow on a little bit from last week's video. So we did this little sampler here. This is a sampler of weird and wonderful threads. I tried out some different um, kinds of threads and looked at the texture and what you could do with these threads. So if you haven't seen this video yet, you can check that out. I'll put that up at the end of this video. Do go and have a look, that, look at that one and have a look at um, all these amazing um, threads that I try out. So in that video, on that sampler, we had a go with some velvet thread. So this is the velvet thread, very, very beautiful. And I showed you that this sampler here that I am working on, um, and I used this velvet thread to work a braid stitch. And I used it to practice because actually these braid stitches would normally be done in a gold thread. And I didn't want to use my gold thread up for practicing. I said, oh, this velvet thread's really good for this. It's got the same kind of structure. And this sampler has been sitting around on my desk since we filmed that video. And I kept looking at it thinking, oh, those braid stitches are really beautiful. I thought, why don't I show you um, how to stitch them. So if you like these stitches that I'm going to show you today I'm going to point you towards a really good book that's got loads more in there um, but let me show you what one looks like first. So the first one I want to show you is called Elizabethan Ladder Braid. I'm just going to go through my materials first. I'm going to practice this on an Ada fabric. Now this is a cross stitch fabric and it means I can count the holes. Now this is really good when you're practicing these braid stitches. They're a little bit tricky to do so if you can have some sort of order to it it makes it a little bit easier. They wouldn't have used this fabric in Elizabethan times. They did it on linen but once you've practiced it and you're comfortable with it you can then go on to another fabric and try it on another one. So I'm going to use that velvet thread that we tried in the sampler before really really nice to show you this stitch and I've got it in a tapestry needle a number 22 to fit this so a nice big needle make sure this thread goes in and if you're doing it on something that's not an Ada fabric not a counted fabric then you can use a chenille needle which is like a tapestry but with a sharp point on the end so you can go through the fabric so these are the materials I'm going to use so let's start my thread off so I've got a knot in the end of it there and I'm just going to put that on the top here and then I take my thread underneath, come up where I want to start and that thread travels across on the back. I'll stitch over that and then we can cut the knot off when we get to it. So that's quite a good way to start this thread off. And I'm going to start in the bottom left hand corner here and I'm going to actually count on this fabric because it makes it a little bit easier to make sure you get your stitch nice and even. So I'm going to go across five holes, that's including the one I come out of, one, two, three, four, five. Then I'm going to go up three from there, one, two, three, and I'm going to make a diagonal stitch. like so, and then we come up opposite that here. So we're coming in line with where I came out, in line with that stitch end there. And I'm going to come up through that like so. The next stage is to take the needle underneath that stitch. And I'm just going to pull that gently. Be careful with your tension on this. If you pull it too tight, it just scrunches the whole thing up. So nice and loose on your tension. And we go back down in the corner. We kind of just crossed those two stitches over. Now we have to do a second one of those before we can do the third part because starting it is a little bit different. If you want to have a go um, starting this and see it again, just stop the video, rewind it and watch this part again because this is the sort of trickiest bit is getting going. So we're going to do a second one of those now. I'm going to come up in between and doing a diagonal. So I'm going to do three from that point there. One, two, three. There's my diagonal stitch come opposite that so in line there and in line like so. I'm going to hook the needle underneath there. Just watch the tension on it and this time we're not going to go back down through the fabric we're going to go underneath that first stitch so you need to look for the stitches that come out so there's one stitch there there's a second stitch there and we go underneath that second stitch and I just slide my needle underneath them. We don't go through the fabric just through the stitch, underneath the stitch, and you'll see that shape form. You get a nice loop there. 
and then we're ready to start again with our diagonal so we're going to go up to there find that point there we go one two three you don't have to do the same count as me by the way if you want to do it a bit closer you can or a bit further apart that's fine just do something that um, repeats itself so that you can see the pattern clearly and that you've got the pattern right so there's my diagonal come up opposite don't forget to hook that underneath there see me just tensioning up I'm just pulling that one there just tensioning up a little bit then we go under the first one the second one and we go underneath there for the second one and that stitch will loop around there and you'll start to see that stitch form now so we do our diagonal one two three opposite hook underneath first stitch second stitch underneath those ones there round in a loop diagonal one two two three don't pull that too tight and you can see what happens if you do you start to scrunch the pattern up so nice and loose there on your tension up to the left underneath first one second one underneath all of them so you do get into a rhythm with this I promise you <laughs> it's just that getting going bit once you've got going it's fairly easy so if you do want to just stop and rewind and watch that beginning again now is a good time to do that I'm going to carry on up to get to the end of my thread and then I'll show you how to finish it off so just got to the end of my thread now so I'm going to finish this off so you want to sort of complete the stitch and looks like it would make sense if you were carrying on with the next part of the stitch so the next part would be that diagonal so rather than go all the way up there I'm just going to take it across the bottom here down into the middle so they're all level along the top like so and that just finishes it off I can turn that over on the back weave my leftover thread underneath those stitches but I just want to show you one more thing because what you can do when you've done that is you can just even your stitches out a little bit these do move on the top as long as you've not done it too tightly and you can just even them out and you get that nice effect of your stitches so as long as you've not done it too tight just have a little bit of a fiddle with it even them out and you've got your finished braid stitch I just want to show you what that stitch looks like in some different threads so they wouldn't have used this velvet thread they would have used um, what's called a gimp which we looked at in that previous video when I did my weird and wonderful threads and this is what it looks like in the gimp and it's quite different as you can see here so this gimp is just like a core thread wrapped with a very fine thread over the top this would have been a silk thread and it's quite thick and quite sort of bendy and it really holds the shape nice you need a thread with a nice structure to do these braid stitches and that's what it would have looked like in the gimp there so it looks a little bit different you can see that sort of structure a little bit more clearly than you can with the velvet thread and um, they would have also have used some gold now I had a little practice with a Japanese thread which isn't really the right kind of thread and I did struggle a little bit you can see it's a bit loose here when you pull this tight it tends to strip the thread but what they would have used is something called a passing or a passing and this is what that looks like so it's a very fine thread it's a little bit similar to the gimp it's a core thread inside just got a very fine piece of metal wrapped all the way around the outside and it's sort of again quite bendy which what helps it keep its structure and they would have used something like that so you can see the way I've practiced it I've started with a thread that's easy to use and I can practice a thread and I've tried it in the gimp and I've tried it in the gold and um, wasn't the right kind of gold so I could go back and try it again you can also have a little play around with how wide you do it and how wide apart you do it that way to get different effects you can see this gold one is wider than the green one so a fun stitch to have a play with once you've got the pattern you can experiment with your threads um, and your distance of your stitches so if you think you might be interested in these braid stitches and Elizabethan embroidery, the stitches that they used, this is the really good book that I mentioned. So this is Elizabethan Stitches, A Guide to Historic English Needlework. It's by Jackie Carey. And Jackie has actually studied some pieces from the 16th and 17th centuries and she's looked at how they were constructed and she's actually worked out how to do them. So there wasn't much written down about how to do them. We have modern equivalents of some of them, but just nothing on how these stitches were actually made. And she's studied 
read them in depth and actual pieces she's managed to look at which is brilliant and she's written instructions on how to do it um, so there's lots of um, historical context in there as well she's looked at some pieces there's the stitches in there massive diagrams and one two three on how to do it and she's got some case studies as well and she shows you the stitches and actual context as well so a really good book if you're interested in historical English needlework because there just isn't a reference like this and Jackie's history is really interesting herself she's um, done a lot on braids and and working out how braids work so I will link to her website as well I'll do her website and I'll put details for the book down in the description below this video if you're interested in those so let's have a look at one more braid stitch. Let's have a look at an Elizabethan double twisted chain stitch. So again, I'm going to use the velvet thread and this is what the stitch looks like here. So this is the green here. This is done in the velvet thread, really lovely stitch. And then I had a go in that passing thread that I just mentioned to you as well, two different sizes. So I'll go over that at the end. So you see, it looks very different depending on what thread you use. So let's have a look at the structure of the stitch. So I've got my knot on the end and again I'm going to start that on the top. We're going to stitch over it on the back and this stitch starts with a little vertical stitch. So I'm just going to put that one in first. So that's this part of the stitch here so it looks like a finished stitch and then we're going to come up and I'm just going to check the diagram, <laughs> make sure I've got this right, sort of a diagonal head of myself. I'm going to come up there. And then we do a little diagonal down to the bottom right hand corner, like so. So you've got a kind of a crossing stitch on it. Then we come up opposite. So I'm going to come back up there. So we're on that first row. And then we go all the way across here. like so and then back to the left now that looks a little bit strange but you can start to see the pattern form so there's that first stitch there we put that crossing one in there that one in there and then we come back ready to start with the next part of the stitch now this is a little bit like that first braid stitch we did now so we're going to go underneath the stitches so there's number one number two is actually that little first stitch we did there so we go underneath that like so that curls around there and then we're just going to go diagonal again. So this one's a little bit simpler once you get going. I think that little starting bit's a bit more complicated, but this is a little bit easier. So just come up to the left, one, two, underneath there with your needle. Don't pull it too tight, cross it over. You can see that stitch forming now, really nice one this. Up to the left, one, two, underneath those. And then we just carry on like that. And when you get to your knot, you can just cut that off. So just be careful you don't cut anything else. Just pull it up, snip it off. We will have stitched over that on the back. So we know that's nice and secure. So up to the left, and then I'm just gonna carry on like that. So I'll do a little bit more and then I'll show you how to finish this one off. Okay, so let's finish off this stitch now. So just again, you've got to kind of imagine how you would be for your next stitch and it's got to look a little bit like that. So this one would be crossing to keep it in line with the end of the stitches here. I'm just gonna take it down through the middle and you'll see that one just as that final cross like so. And you can finish your thread on the back. And again, you can just adjust this one. Now this chain is sort of sitting on top of the surface. You can see how it actually moves. So you can shuffle it to the middle. And then if you want to just pull out your stitches like so, just open them up a bit so you can see that pattern you can. So you can mess around with this and move it around quite a bit. It's quite a nice, easy one to do like that. And then again, I just used the passing, used a copper passing this time to try it. And what I did with this one is this is the same spacing that I've done here. So it, to this point, this is exactly the same. You can see how different they look, it's really interesting. And then for this top part, I did them a lot closer together. I thought this thread's a lot finer than the velvet. What happens if I just shove it in a little bit more more and you get the same pattern you can see that there but a much smaller version of it so you, lots of room to have a little play with these and to create something a bit different 
So just got one more that I wanted to show you because I kept seeing this as I was looking through the book and I thought oh, it was really beautiful. I want to have a go at one of those. And it's got some also interest in the fact that there is a modern version of this. So this is a woven wheel. I've done these a lot before. So this is the one that I did in the Weird and Wonderful Threads video when I tried all those different threads and I did this in a kind of strange ribbon. But this is what I'm used to doing when we do these. And because you're weaving something you need an odd number of spokes because you need to go over and under and over and under if you have an even number you end up doing the same one and it doesn't look right um but the elizabethan version the elizabethan spider's web as it's called is only done over four and i was really intrigued by that well how do you weave something when it's only over four so i had to go at these and this is what they come out like and they're really beautiful <laughs> i love them and i'll show you it in velvet in a minute because that looks really really beautiful in the velvet and i thought i'll have a go in the gold as well and they look lovely so they do kind of put a fifth spoke in so I'll show you how to do one of those um, because they're really beautiful and they're definitely going to appear in more projects I think. So I've got my knot right out of the way and I'm going to come up here in the middle and we need to put a big cross in first. So I have gone one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So an upright like that and then one across it like so. So that gives you the structure of your rows and then you need one more see when you bring it back to the top you kind of make a fifth spoke so i'm going to bring it sort of up there i'm actually going to pierce the fabric for this one because i want that to come there like so and then you start weaving and you're going to use that one as the fifth one why they didn't think to just do five <laughs> equally spaced i don't know when that innovation came in but it's really interesting to see how these things start and the history behind them so i'm going to go over the first one under the second we're just going to weave around in a circle don't pull it too tight so we've gone under that we're going to go over that we're going to go under that one there and this is where the fifth one comes in that makes it possible to weave it in the first place. So that little first stitch we did, we use that as one of the spokes. So we go over that and under that. And now we're going altern alternately around. So we go under that one, over that one, under that one. And that's the only thing that makes it work. So it's really interesting they did four. I don't know who the first person to think, you know what, I'll do five is. But they just come out so beautifully and in this thread as well they look really stunning so i'm just going to go around a few times over there under and as long as you're always going alternately over and under there's a little starting one so i'm going to go over that i'm going to go under that one there and over that and then just when you feel like you can't go around anymore you can finish that off so i'll just make that the last one and i'm just going to come over that there and take it through to the back and that is one instant rose i just think they're beautiful really lovely especially in this thread so that just goes to show you with a little bit of experimenting i pulled some threads out last week i haven't used for a long time and had a little go with it and then i found this book and was using the stitches out of that book now i found something that i've never used before and i think is really lovely so well worth playing with and having an experiment and trying your different um, stitches and different threads so I've had a lot of fun playing with this little sample. I'm going to go and finish it off actually. Um, I'll finish these areas here, try some more stitches with it and I'll put some pictures of that up on the community page if you want to see how that's come out. And if you're interested in this and you're interested in these threads, don't forget to check out that video on my weird and wonderful threads up here. And if you check out this one down here, it's 10 different kinds of threads in one stitch just to compare the different threads. And as usual, thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, do give it a thumbs up and I will see you next time.